think there's one person who was here with me last time, so I'm in good company. <laughs> uh, I just have a quick couple of questions, and then we'll get started, right? Anybody here thinks they're going to live forever? <laughs> just check. Then they shouldn't be here. No. Okay, good. Anybody here would like to work way past the time they want to work? Anyone? They shouldn't also be here. I'm ready for okay. that. <laughs> Good. So then let's talk about, you know, that, that's a perfect segue, right? So if you think you're going to live forever, you shouldn't be here. If you think you would like to work forever, doing whatever makes you happy, that's perfect. But again, not the best choice of time to spend your time with. However, if you're interested in ensuring a financial stability, you are in the right room. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. So quick couple of ground rules, right? Because I didn't, do a, I didn't do a count, but let's say there are 15 people. So other 14 people shouldn't get disturbed by cell phones, that kind of thing, right? So do me a favor, I know life is busy. There's text messages and emails, and I promise to switch mine off too, and so I'm not the one who's like ringing and like that. So is that okay? Just put it on vibrate or you know, just mute it so it's helpful for us. Fair enough? Okay, on my side, I promise the next uh, 40 minutes, you will walk away from here having learned something, okay? Any and all questions are welcome. Just do me a favor and just exercise your muscles so we'll make it an exercise class too. And, and just raise your hand so I can kind of... Uh, my other request as you ask your questions is try not to get too specific to your situation. I'm always happy to take questions afterwards, right? And, and I'm happy to answer those. Uh, and you know, I have a deep relationship with India USA and I'm happy to have you guys pick up the phone and talk to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, you know, without any issues, etc. Okay? So, so just keep that in mind and then we'll talk separately. Uh, I'm very happy to have Scott. Scott's an old uh, uh, associate of ours and, and you know, he wanted to come join in, so that's perfect. Come on, guys. Uh, the other thing, one of the other, the second ground rule is Anshubai will circulate the pitch so you don't have to worry about taking notes, et cetera, right? What I say, you will get the same page as a PDF uh, in your emails, et cetera. So don't, don't have to worry about taking notes. So we can all have our focus here. Make sense? Okay, good. I have a quick disclaimer, which I'm gonna flip to, right? This is just my opinion of how life should be, right? It is not applicable to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So just keep that in mind. I'm giving you general specifics. I know a few, I know a couple of you, uh, and I don't know many of you, so again, till I know personal circumstances, etc., I'm not able to offer you financial advice. But this is just a general discussion, and we'll have a great discussion out of it. Make sense? Okay? Good. This is my life when I dream. <laughs> right? It's a smooth flowing ride. Then I wake up, and this is what happens to me. Anybody disagree? <laughs> the phone is ringing, somebody is craving, the children are jumping on my head, something happened, right? And so that's how life is, right? We wish this, we get this. Hey, listen, what's plan B? So you gotta stick with this, right? That's the reality of it. But the focus that we have to keep, right, is, is this particular part, this small little checkered flag, right, what we talked about. We, we're not gonna live forever and we sure don't wanna work forever, right? And so what's our goal going to be? That's the plan we have to keep. And, and just keep marching through the valleys and the ups and downs, right? Life is life, and so we just have a plan now. Anybody think this can be possible? I would want you to come up here and no, okay. Just check. So, so that's how life is, right? And, and we'll talk about why this becomes this and why sometimes people fall off and, uh, and uh, why that becomes an issue. I, I borrowed this, right? What, I helps, what it helps educate for me, if you think about any emergency that you ever had, I'll tell you one of mine, right? So I was on a trip to Houston. I had a seven o'clock flight out of Boston. Seven a.m., two kids and a wife to get in the car, and the only excuse for, from Boston is the airport is 30 minutes away. I had an Uber waiting for me at 5.15. I was gonna be early to the airport, right? I wake up. The reality is, wakes up, right? And the clock reads 5.50. The clock reads 5.50. Right, I got a seven o'clock flight. 
fortunately, I had a plan, right? I, I knew I was gonna run late, not because I was gonna wake up late, but because my kids were gonna make me late, or I was gonna do something, and you know, we were gonna get into a discussion with my wife, and so forth. But I had a plan, right? That I would have a 30 minute buffer, and I had a plan that the Uber, a second Uber would come at 5.45. So that was waiting for me. So literally in my pajamas, I could just go to the airport. And it's Boston airport, so it's like 30 minutes away. The point being, it's better to have a plan than to have no plan, right? The checkered flag that I talked about, to keep that in mind, what's our plan to get to the checkered flag? Life is gonna throw curve balls, right? You're gonna go up and down, it's okay. But have a simple plan. I call it a one-pager plan, right? A one-pager page that you carry in your, back, in your back pocket, in your purse, whatever. But you have a plan, so you look to it every time you get nervous or something moves that makes you think about, hey, am I doing this right? So keep a plan. And so we'll talk about that, right? And what's the elements of the plan? We'll talk about five basic components of the plan, okay? It doesn't mean that's the overall plan, but remember, a plan, a one-page plan is better than no plan, okay? So we'll talk about the five components. This is a, broadly the five pieces of the plan that you should have in place, right? That I can guide you on, right? You'll go talk to a doctor, they'll talk about healthcare, you talk to a dietitian, they'll talk about things that are known to them, right? These are things that are known to me, right? So if you think about these pieces, right? And this is what I call as, you know, I attended very few classes in school, but then I did, I learned a few things. So this is called a Maslow hierarchy, right? Anybody hear of Maslow hierarchy? As we go up in life, our needs change, right? When I was 15, my needs were different. When I'm 40 plus, my needs are different, right? So, so needs and wants kind of change. So you start from cash flow, which is basically managing your daily expenses, right? So you wanna make sure your cash flows are covered, your utility bills, et cetera, all those things are covered, right? That's the first thing you wanna make sure you've covered up. And then as you go up, you make sure you have life insurance or you have other insurances that make sure you're, protect, you're protecting your loved ones, et cetera, in, in case of eventualities, right? Then you think about, listen, I've got a few dollars left. So I'm gonna talk about, hey, listen, what do we do with those few dollars, right? How do we make them count? How do we make them work hard for us, right? Because we, all you guys, I'm pretty sure work hard. So you've gotta make sure your savings also work, if not harder, but as hard as you guys do, right? And so we'll talk about that. And then you say, okay, listen, you know, I've got my dollars stacked away, I'm making all the right things in terms of insurance, et cetera. How do I make sure I get the most effective bank for my savings, right? So that's tax planning. Right? And then you want to talk about what happens when you have moved on and you've got kids or you have charities or other considerations that you want to take about for your assets, right? So that's estate planning, right? So people who are here can only get here when they've covered this. You cannot jump from here to here unless you win the lottery. It's very difficult, right? It's unusual unless you have, uh, you know, a silver spoon somebody gives you that, but you've got to move through the hierarchy, otherwise it doesn't, you know, you, you can't jump layers on it. Make sense? Yeah? No. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, just crucial, right? Perfect. So the question you gotta ask yourself, right, is as you look at this, have you covered these portions, right? To go back again to the checkered flag, what are we here for? For the checkered flag, right? That's our win. The checkered flag needs steps. The steps need planning, right? So we need, we need the checkered flag to have a plan. We have a one-page plan. The components of the plan are this, and you need to get through those plans, right? Fair enough? Okay. So let's talk about a few things and how we can you know, get there ourselves. And so we'll, we'll cover a few parts, not everything in detail, right, because time is a constraint, but we'll try and cover the more important parts. Make sense? Okay. Anybody not like free money? No hands raised. Everybody likes free money? Just checking. Yeah. So how many of you take the full contribution, assuming you're working, from your 401ks? Everyone? Mm -hmm. Few, uh, okay, so no specifics. So that's free money, right? Do you show up to your work five days a week, nine to five, whatever hours, eight to eight, whatever it is, and they, most of the times, most of the companies, will give you what's called a matching contribution to your 401k plan, right? Everybody know what a 401k is, yeah? And so if you contribute, they also contribute, these days there are even better companies where even if you don't contribute, they'll still contribute, but those are very few. So here, they will contribute if you contribute. But if you don't contribute, they will not contribute. So if you wanna leave free money behind, then don't contribute. But if you wanna make sure you get that additional contribution, right? And we'll talk about what the dollars are in a little bit detail, but not too much. Uh, 
then you should definitely contribute. I know there are specific cases because uh, you know, I've talked to many of you people, there's H1B issues, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so don't worry about those issues. Those are solvable issues, right? Even if you're not continuing your, you know, being here in the United States, you can still have a 401k and that will give you the benefit even if you're not here physically. Okay, so I just wanna be clear. So make sure you try and contribute to the maximum extent possible, sometimes six and a half percent or, or whatever the percentage is based on your compensation levels. But in 2017, so because every year it moves, right? If you have a traditional 401k, you get to $18,000 soft away pre-tax. That's the beautiful thing, right? Like my, when I go for a haircut, I don't pay for how much hair they take off. They charge me for how much they keep on. <laughs> Just say, right? So in this particular case, <laughs> make sure you, you do this on a pre-tax basis, right? If you do it on a 401k, it's on a pre-tax basis. So you don't want to haircut your savings on day one. It's better to have the savings grow in a 401k on a pre-tax basis than it is to do it on an after-tax basis. Okay, if you have cash flow issues, that's different, right? Go back to the master hierarchy. But if you can do it on a pre-tax basis, perfect. A 401k lets you do that. So not a, it's a double whammy, right? You save money on a pre-tax basis. Your company contributes to that money, right? So if it's a good company, if you save 18,000, it's very likely they will contribute somewhere between six to nine thousand dollars. And some might even do 18,000, but very few, because there's limits that they start hitting. But at least six to nine thousand dollars, they will contribute on your side. I'm speculating here, but that's broadly what the rules should be. Uh, and you do it on a pre-tax basis, so you don't pay tax today. So as you go through life, your tax rate goes up, and then it kind of starts to, you know, slow, assuming how life is, right? Your income streams go up as you mature into your roles, etc. And then as you retire, the income stream tends to come off, just on a compensation basis. So your tax rate, etc., will fluctuate. So it's always better to make the income grow or the savings grow on a pre-tax basis. Okay, and so try and do that. There's a couple of one different drop, there's a couple of different plans uh, which okay, are one, available. One, can I, or you want me to take that later? No, I, yeah. let's go ahead, yeah. Just can you do it just loud so everybody kind of. Yeah, sure. sorry, I'm a little, I'm down with cold, so it might be a little uh, nasal. But, the, but what I wanted to ask you is that if you don't have a matching contribution, yeah. Um, and then, you know, I understand that you are talking about, uh, you know, uh, tax savings as a part of your pre tax, uh, uh, you know, uh, benefits that you get. But if you do do withdraw that, aren't, isn't the penalty, uh, you know, uh, equalizing the, the the tax advantages you get in that period which you've been, uh, you know, you've got uh, over the you know the, the, the number of years you've uh, basically contributed? Yeah. So, so let me rephrase your question, right? <coughs> Just to make sure I kind of frame it for yeah. for, the, for the folks, right? You're saying, listen, I am contributing today, yeah. and I'm not getting a matching contribution, right? Mm -hmm. Which is unusual, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm not getting a matching contribution and I'm saving tax today, right? right? But tomorrow I withdraw it. So there's a quick couple of things here. If you withdraw it, first it's locked in for a certain window of time, okay? So it's locked in for five years, depending on you know, every company to company, but it's typically five years. The second is if you withdraw it before 401k is 55, if you withdraw it before 55, you have to pay a penalty, okay. right? There's a 10% penalty plus the tax you will pay on it, right? However, there are exceptions to that where in certain specific instances if you're buying a primary residence, if you have a health issue, et cetera, where you can withdraw it without a penalty. You still have to pay tax on it, okay? But you can take it without a penalty. The point being, you have to let it grow on a pre-tax basis. When you need it, it's available to you, right? You can take a loan against it, et cetera, et cetera. So there are options. But if you haven't put it away, if you haven't put it away, you don't have plan B, right? If you don't put it away, you don't get to put it away because it's not like you can say, hey, last year I didn't do this contribution. Can I put $18,000? Uh-uh. So that's the bigger thing, right? The other things we can work through. So that's my bigger point. So the key sense? to that statement is you can take a loan against your 401k, mm -hmm. okay? But when you pay the loan back, you're paying it back to yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right? Right. So. You pay taxes on it, right, when you withdraw it, and then you have income taxes on it. And so the interesting part for the people who are self-employed is that even if you are the employer, you can also be the employee, right? From a legal perspective, you can have both hats. Uh, if, you're, if you're a salaried person, then you are the employee, employer, and your employee will do the contribution. 
So, so don't leave the free money behind, okay? There are certain other specific uh, you know, retirement plans that I'm not gonna cover. Uh, there's a set, there's a, you know, uh, if, if you guys, if there's somebody who's interested in it, uh, has a business, et cetera, then we can talk separately. And so then the limits are much heavier, right? $55,000 versus 80,000, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that's typically outside the coverage I'll, I'll provide today, okay? So what happens when you stop paying the, like, contributing towards this account and uh, you just leave the money there itself? Leave the money there, it grows. Yeah, we'll talk about that, what what you have to do with the money, uh, but if you leave it, nothing happens to it. They will track you down. They'll make their best effort to track you down, and you, of course, can access it anyways. You can roll it over into a IRA yourself if you moved on from a job. You can consolidate multiple 401, X401K jobs into one IRA. So those are things which you can do. But the first thing, get the free money, make sure you do the contribution, and then, yes, you can do IRAs, you can do you know, withdrawals and special circumstances and all the other things, right? You gotta build the foundation blocks first. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question here. So what's the difference between the traditional and Roth? Roth is like basically post-tax? Yes. This is the key difference, right? You pay income tax and withdrawal. So Roth is after-tax money. 401k is a pre-tax money. So if you have $100 that you put away, then the entire 100 will go and show up in your four, traditional 401k. If you have a tax rate of 20%, then $80 will show up. But the benefit is that you don't pay tax afterwards. Right, so here the hundred dollars becomes make up a number, right? Yeah. And so then you pay tax based on that. Here you don't pay taxes; it's it's pre-tax. I'm sorry, it's after tax. Makes sense? And if something happens to you and you give your kids that law, mm -hmm. they don't pay taxes on it. Right. Yeah. They can give it to their kids at some point. Yep. Makes sense. Good. And then there's a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, which even if you are working, your other half can still have, right? So it doesn't necessarily, very important point, you know, based on my advice, this thing, she does all the work, I do no work. But even not, despite not doing any work, I can still have a traditional IRA. I cannot have a 401k because I don't get a, I don't get a paid check in that sense, but I can get an IRA set up for myself and, and, and sock away $5,000, $5,500. So if 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 you're if you're one of you know husband or wife one of them is working the other one can still have these accounts, All right? So what do we remember? Take the free money. Here's a second one, right? What do you do with that money when it's in your account? What do you do? And we'll talk about that, right? But try and avoid investing. And this is my opinion of it, right? I want to be clear. Try and avoid a target retirement fund, any annuities. Right? People will say, listen, don't have to worry about the downside. The downside is protected and there's some upside. So those are those are typical annuities. There are many kinds of annuities, but that's one of the annuities. Uh, and then they'll try and sell you a whole life policy. If you want to send my kids to college, if you guys are good guys, then you should buy whoever's selling you the whole life policy. Just saying. That's the amount of commission that typically somebody will make on that. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have insurance. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about a specific or kind of policy, right? I, we call it the bells and whistles policy. You should have term life insurance, which is very different from whole life insurance, where you have term life, which is basically you are getting covered or your loved ones are getting covered for a certain amount of money if something would happen to you, right? So your liabilities are taken care of. Whole life on the other hand says, hey listen, you'll also get some money back after some window of time if you keep making these, uh, these payments. And so that's what you gotta watch out for. Right? And I will take on anybody, I'll take on, I don't want to make up that bold of a statement, but I will bet that whoever can show me that a whole life is better than investing yourself away from the insurance product of it, I'll be very surprised. I'll just say it that way. Okay? And then you have some, when you say for in your 401ks, right, what happens? So then you have to invest it somewhere. You can keep it in cash, that's one option, right? Within the 401k framework. You can invest it in bonds. You can invest it in, 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 in equities, right? And so there are different kinds of choices you have to make. One of the choices which is very popular these days is, is, is the target retirement fund, right? Hey, I'm gonna retire in 2060. And then I'm gonna choose a retirement for, uh, target retirement fund for 2060. But the question I ask, and the reason why I say this is very simple. I, the day that you retire, are you gonna start using that money? 
Yes. No. One or the other answer. But let's say it's a yes. Are you going to use up the entire sum of money right away? Anyone planning to do it? So why shouldn't that money work for you as you slowly draw on it, right? What the target retirement fund does, it presumes that, hey, listen, your risk tolerance is this much when you start, and then as you get closer to retirement, it comes down. But you have to understand, when you retire at 60, 62, whatever the number is, 65, you again are gonna live for at least a 20-year lifespan where you still need your savings to grow, right? You need those things to grow. So what type of the, after the retirement fund, you said target date, it stops? It yeah, it's in bonds, bonds, sitting in bonds. It's just like, like in cash in that sense? It's sort of cash, it becomes like 100% bonds. And at, then, at that time, we can't change the option? You can't, but, so here's what happens, right? You're 40, you're gonna get to 65 when you retire, right? So it's, it gives you a 25 year glide back. And this is where the highest allocation of equities is. And then it slowly ebbs away, right? It becomes 100%, or sorry, it shouldn't be 100%, 80-20 and then it becomes 50-50, then it becomes 100% bonds. That's not how it should be, right? Because now, for this window of time, where you still were in the target retirement fund, it's earning you less rates. And I'll show you the numbers. It's earning you less interest rate, right? It's earning you less returns. So when you get to 65, you're already slowed down. There's no reason for it to slow down. So what are the other options in 401? Uh, so it's a specific question, but there are other choices that are available to you, uh, you know, index funds, et cetera, where you should be investing. Uh, if, and, and there's obviously a risk to capital, right? That your capital can come down. So I want to be very clear, right? When you make an investment, your capital can come down, right? But if you, there's a risk reward perspective that you keep in mind. And so there are other choices. There, there always will be other choices there. Well, why not just stagger your target retirement fund between the 25, 35, and 40, so you are having the balance of your, so in other words, as a vanilla So make it a ladder kind of thing, right? Exactly. Very fancy. Doesn't work. Because, yeah, I'll tell you why. I don't mean to be answering. No, I'm you. interested to know why. Yeah, because when you laddered in, you still get to a different kind of mix. You don't get to a precise mix of what you should be, right? And what that means is this. You might have other savings which you're going to draw on and not draw on the 401k until you get to 70 as an example. Right, because at 70 and a half, you start taking what's known as RMDs. Mm -hmm. So you would like it to keep growing, and as you stagger it, you keep getting off the glide path, coming back on the glide path, getting off the glide path, so it becomes complicated pretty fast. And you don't have to make it complicated. It's like you wanna eat bread, but first you're gonna make it into a pretzel, and then you're gonna eat it. So do, I, I'm, again, I can't get into the specifics, but I, I'll have to walk you through the maths. Yeah. Okay. It's better to just do be, Perhaps as one option, if that's your risk profile, just be in an index fund. It just gets you the same place very easily. So yeah? the key with leading a financial planner is that person is going to cater to exactly what you need personally. It's not going to be, you know, a 2040 or 2045 fund depending on when you think you're going to retire. Vic caters to exactly what you're going to need. So he's going to ask you to figure out what your risk profile is now. And then every year or whatever you want to talk to him, he can rebalance your account according to changes in your specific lifestyle. So that's what he did for me. All right, Scott, thank you. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the advantages in terms of interacting with other folks, right? You get another sense. So so let me let me move on from there as to as you change jobs, just a quick couple of things to watch out for, right? When you ask the question, hey, listen, I have a 401k, I'm going somewhere else, what happens to that? And so just keep these in mind. These are specific to the US. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I wasn't aware of it and I learned it and so on and so forth, right? Um, this this is a, came as a surprise to me. Whoever you name as a beneficiary on your IRA account, it overreaches whatever your will or your trust has. Okay? And even in your 401k, you have, it's, it's typical that your, your spouse is the beneficiary of the 401k. And then you have to get a signature from him or her if you allocate somebody else to be the beneficiary. The same thing holds in the IRA here. Whoever your beneficiary is, he or she gets the advantage irrespective of what your will or trust says. Okay. So you can allocate percentages. In yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can do that, but understand that this is where you have to take a positive step. You can't leave it to, hey, listen, my will said this, and so I'm taking care of. 
So you have to take positive steps versus just letting it be, right? And so that's something interesting. The benefit of a 401k or a 403b, depending on where you are, right? Instead of a, instead of an IRA, you can allow for distributions from 55 onwards without the penalty. Okay, so it gives you another uh, gives you an advantage of about four and a half years where you can start withdrawing earlier if you need to without paying the additional penalty. You'll still have to pay tax on it. Don't get me wrong, but you don't have to pay the penalty on it, right? So make sure you keep putting money in a 401k. Okay. Is it a tax on the principal or the 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 in a 401k, it's the entire balance. Okay. In a Roth, mm -hmm. it's first time tax, and then you don't pay tax, okay. including on the gains. Okay. However, if you have losses, you do not get to recoup your losses on your Roth, right? Yeah. Okay. And your 401k, if you have losses, then the principal for the total sum comes down, so you don't pay the interest on it. When you move, when you transfer, when you do a rollover, right? Never get a check in your name, right? Always make sure you do a seamless transfer, which is very typical today but some companies still will have an older process. So don't get, don't get a check from the company, just move a direct funds transfer. It's very seamless, very electronic. It doesn't get lost. But a check could get lost if you don't do it in a certain time frame, which is 30 to 60 days, you will be penalized. The IRS is very specific to that, and they will claim taxes from you on that, okay? Uh, this is specific to people who have company stock, and so, you know, I can talk more in detail, but essentially try not to roll over your company stock. It doesn't, it doesn't help in many instances. Uh, and so try and avoid that, okay? I'm sure everybody gets this, right? First you pay taxes and put it into a Roth account, and then you're saying, no, no, I wanna make an IRA out of it. <laughs> and then you pay, again. you can do it, right? And then you pay taxes on the IRA when you take it out. Sort of like getting a multiple haircut, right? <laughs> So what is what is your recommendation on the side? IRA yeah. to do both IRA for next seven years. I, I would say it depends on your existing tax rate, right? So whatever your tax rate is, there's an arbitrage to be had between future tax rates and today's tax rate, right? So if you're on the lower tax side and you see that your income levels are going to go up for whatever reason, which I hope it does, then you can say, listen, I'm going to do a little bit of conversion into a Roth because I want to pay 15% personal tax versus projected 30% future tax. And so you should put money into a Roth, right? That's, that's one very simple option that you should think about. Uh, the other option to think about if you feel that, hey, listen, there's, there's a market that's gone down, but that comes down to market timing, so I really don't want to get into it. But if you feel the market's gone down significantly, so you have, a, you have a capital, you had capital of this much and the capital came down here, and now it's an opportunity for you to convert, that's another opportunity. Right, so there are things like those, but broadly I would say look at the, the first thing to look at is what's your effective tax rate today, and you what do you expect it to be out a little bit later. Do you pay capital gains tax or do you pay ordinary income tax? Ordinary income tax, ordinary sorry, income. did I say capital? I, um, I was asking. I yeah, no, you pay ordinary income tax. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. So, because of the income limit, let's say you're not able to uh, directly um, contribute to Rob IRA, but now there is a back door I heard, right, where you can do in traditional IRA, non-deductible contribution, and then convert it to Roth Yes, IRA. that is do correct. Do you see any issue with that? I don't. However, you have to watch out for what you have in your IRA. Yeah, it needs to be zero. It know. needs to be zero because otherwise they, yeah. will co they will assume that you're converting completely. Yeah, right. And you will be then liable for tax on the entire amount. Not your 401k. I got it. So just be very careful. That's why I don't want to go into that. Okay. It's, it's like, you know, Sometimes you have to eat bread while making it a pretzel, because that's how you want to make it, right? And so that's one of those instances. But yeah, you can do that. Be careful of what you have to watch out for. This is the great part for people who are in business, where whatever your retirement savings are, even if you declare bankruptcy, the law of the land is that the people cannot come after you for that. So it's money that's very safe, right? Even if the companies go bankrupt, it's still protected to a very reasonable extent. So it's like almost, you know, it's not like, hey, listen, my company's gonna go down, my money's gonna go down. No, by law, they have to alleviate it away. Now, there could be other stock option plans or other bonus plans which are linked to company performance, that's a separate thing. I'm just talking about your 401k, right? So it's money that's kind of put away. So, so make sure, you know, we focus on that.
So the, the good news and the bad news, right? There are many missteps, and I just listed a few. We talked about a few here of what you to watch out for, and there are only a few right steps. So make sure you stay or get counsel or guidance, right? We guys, and, and I'm looking across the room here, right? We like to think we know all the answers, right? Because that's how we were brought up, right? We know all the answers. Before we were born, or the minute we were born, my father said, Mira la Have you guys watched that movie? <laughs> Which movie am I thinking about? Three years? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Right? Beta engineer banega. So we don't say that 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 we don't To not know it and to acknowledge not knowing it, many people here think of it as a positive thing, right? It's an opportunity to learn. For us, it's like, what is this? Like, you know, that kind of thing. It's a, so my point is, if you do the misstep, there is no, there's no going back, right? So be very careful, talk to the right folks when you do those kind of things. And first and most important things, don't miss out on the things available here. Because when we come to the US, sometimes we don't know what the rules and regulations are. I'm standing here, I'm happy to tell you, and I'm sad to tell you, the first seven years, six and a half years of my working life here, I did not know that they had something called a 401 gap. I didn't. When I back calculate that, and there's no way I can put money away. So not only was I not getting the free money, I was not also putting the money in on a pre-tax basis. And there's no way I can, get, I can go back in time. But you learn, right? And so you impart the lessons to others that they don't make the same mistakes. And asking is fine. Don't, don't, you know, don't get hung up on not asking. I have a question about, uh, you uh, talked about financial planners or counsel getting advice from people. Scoundrels, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like when you, um, you invest in 401k and whichever company your, your, your organization has a tie up with, they generally give you advice or financial planning uh, options and things like that. So in your opinion, are they any good? Or they are just plain vanilla, they're just doing the bare minimum? Uh, it depends company to company and advisor to advisor. Okay. Uh, I would not blanket them and say they're, they're not good. Okay. Uh, I think what you need to push them, and we are not good at having those conversations, mm -hmm is they understand the complexities of our background mm -hmm. versus just a typical background which may or may not be the right case in this case. Mm -hmm. So to give you a long answer to your short question, yeah. Yeah. take the advice. Mm -hmm. It's better than no advice, mm -hmm. right? And who knows, you might learn something from it, mm -hmm. but then go back and do some more research on your side, and you can always talk to other people too. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, he said that, what do you guys think? Ah. And that's okay, right? What, if they give advice, you don't have to necessarily take it, right? Right, right. And so, but make sure you take the advice. And cross-check it from another source or another discussion and see if that works best. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Okay. I would say that. It's kind of difficult to say, listen, they're good or not good, not knowing, you know. Right. Some are great, some are not so great. Typical to any occupation, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. They're very generic, actually, but that's the right way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, because I, I work for AIG, so we have big thing, and you can do get all these advices. Right. And uh, I have tried it one or two times, but they, they give you very generic thing. I was just going to ask Yeah, so it, it, yeah. and the AIG has such a detailed program, but uh, at the end they'll say, oh, come set up a meeting <laughs> with us, yeah. and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So that's... So it, but it's, it's there. I mean, it's there. They tell you a few things. Right. It's like you, 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 you say, hey, I, I, I have a headache. Yeah. Right? So like, yeah, yeah, take your time or not. Now they don't know why you have a headache, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's better to have those you know, good research done. Mm -hmm. Because again, once a train leaves the station, it's not coming back. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the thing. So, so you make sure you kind of do the homework before you do the decisions. Once you do the decision, then it's done. You know, once you break an egg, it's broken. That kind of thing. So I'm gonna switch focus to estate planning. Remember back to the, the triangle I talked about? And so I'm trying to get to the top of it and then there's a middle piece here which, which we'll talk about in much greater deal because that, to me, without knowing you guys, is the most important, is the second most important piece, which is on the investing side. But let's cover estate planning here. And, I, and I'm pretty sure based on my interactions with, with, with 
these kind of groups, none of these, or most likely three out of four of these is not covered by any of you in the classroom. Okay, I, I, I can't bet money, but I'm pretty sure. Maybe a candy, how's that? <laughs> and, and the reason why we do it, right? It, it, this, this is actually the part, right? Every morning I wake up, I'm thankful that I've woken up. Just saying. And so not knowing what the next morning is gonna bring, assuming you love your husband, wife, children, parents, grandparents, whoever the case be, right? You, you should take on yourself some of these things because when we have passed, and that's why I remember I asked the question, anybody think they're gonna live forever? If you think so, then uh, you're wasting your time. But if you think that at some point other people will be impacted by your passing, then you have to plan for it. And it's a tough discussion, right? But you still have to have it. Because without, remember, no plan, big blood pressure issues, right? Some plan, you're okay. Make sense? Okay. The, the other thing that's very important about estate planning is if you don't know what you're doing and you don't set it up correctly, it could cost a lot of money in the future. So I've had, I've had a couple of people die in my life and they set up their trusts and wills and stuff in a certain way. And if they didn't set it up that way, I could have benefited a lot more from them passing. So this is very critical that you set this up correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, so hopefully you guys, if you don't have it, today night is a good time to start it, right? Before switching on the TVs and the cell phones and whatever. And you can do this very economically. You know, there are many, if you look up the internet, there's many very inexpensive options available for you just online, sitting in the comfort of your couch in your sweatpants to get this done. Zoom docs. <laughs> there, there are many of the uh, Zoom docs, whatever, whatever, whatever you guys think works best for you. But you can get this done between, I would say somewhere between $100, $150 to $200. If you pay more than that, you should reach out. Because none of us have that complicated lives without knowing you guys, I don't think so. But if you do, then let me know, and I'm happy to give you a, another option. Get this done. Because it goes to probate in different states, et cetera, and it's a headache. If you want to pass on the headache, that's your choice. <laughs> if you don't want to, I would recommend you do this. Make sense? And we put it off thinking we're gonna live forever, right? I definitely plan to live forever, but I, just in case life interferes, these things are in place, right? It's like a safety net. Uh, make sure you have a durable power attorney, right? It gives you permission, whoever you think is the right person, right? It may not be your spouse, maybe another, because if you are traveling together, so God forbid something happens, then you have a third party who's kind of able to look at it, right? So make sure you have that durable power attorney. Uh, a living will is something which, which is unique to many uh, countries where you tell your doctor before you go in for a major surgery, as an example, right? What happens if something were to happen, right? So you guys have the, before you have the, before you get incapacitated, you have the capacity to decide how life should be for you, right? So you're living on your own terms. It's a very, it's a very powerful thing to have so you know what happens to you if you're not able to take care of yourself, right? Same thing as a healthcare proxy, right? If you don't want to decide or there are other circumstances which happen, so you know your, you let your wishes be known, and then they can decide on your behalf what makes the best sense of your incapacity. Very simple documents to set up, very basic documents to set up, and they're all held in wide regard. They're legal documents. They're given the weight of the court, etc. You guys, you know, we probably know the first or the second, may not know the third and the fourth, and I'm pretty sure, I'll be very happy if somebody raised their hand and said they have all four, but. I wish you had put money on that. <laughs> I did it, but uh, that was after your last session, so thank you. Okay. All four, yeah. <laughs> I will take Credit that. is yours. Say, you got a candy, you got a candy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's great, that's great, right? That's the, that's the difference I want to make, right? That people realize what I can give a little bit back, that they can take care of these things, and they're in a better place. Okay? Yeah. Sorry, out of curiosity, so when you do make these wills online, yeah. do, does it have to be registered with the uh, government organization? How does that just... Sure, sure, fair question. So it's specific state to state. You have to, in, and they will do it for you. So oh, they, it's that, they are lawyers. It's not just like a yeah. website. They send you, uh, they're they're lawyers, lawyers. Yeah, they're lawyers. So you, it, they will they take you wing to wing. It's not like they'll leave you midway, yeah. right? So they will take you wing to wing and they'll complete it for, for you. If it's, not, if it's supposed to be registered with the local authorities, they will do that part too. Or so like I documents. use legal do, and it was like $125, $30. And they did end to it, everything, they give you all the sealed copies. 
and it's quick questions and answers you have to just say I want this option it, it's very simple question answer. okay, okay thank you. So, both both generally both all of so, them so both so yes. kind of thing huh. okay. it's literally you replace the name his ko har kar do and you're done <laughs> I'm not sure. No, it's, it's right. Because if, yeah. if you're yeah. traveling alone, something happens to you, God forbid, then she's in a good spot. If she's traveling alone, God forbid something's going to happen to her, then you're in a good spot. So just, and it doesn't matter, right? The cost is like so minimal, and the, the penalty of not doing it is, is, is you know. But if, you, if your wife doesn't have independent property, mm -hmm. it's, you're good not having it. The document says what to do if both are traveling. Living will and both. Don't, don't travel together. Yeah? Make sense, guys? Everybody's going to do this? I'm going to come around next time. If you don't raise your hands, I want to take candies from you guys. <laughs> Just saying. All right. So this is the part which I have the best fun in. Blank page. Yeah. In where we are, right, this gets me most excited. And there's a very simple reason. You guys work for big companies, yeah. But any of those companies have four and a half billion people working for them. Anyone? On their payroll, every morning, four and a half billion people on their payroll. Anybody have a company like that? No? So, in what I'm about to talk about, you get to be the company which has four and a half billion people working for you. And you know what the best part is? They don't call you for any of the issues. You don't have to cut them a paycheck, but they will still work for you. Isn't that fun? I'm just saying. Anybody have issues with having that kind of lifestyle? Every morning, without any phone calls, nothing, no payroll, no paycheck, they, without phone call, they will show up and work. Four and a half billion people across the world. That is the power of the capital markets, right? Where four and a half billion people, including us, are engaged in commerce in one way or the other. If you're a, whatever role you're playing, playing in whatever it is, right? You're engaged in commerce in one way or the other, either because you're selling or you're buying, doing something, there's a transaction going on. You're part of the four and a half billion people who are consuming or producing, who show up and add value in the commerce life. And you can do that by making something called as investing, right? Because you've got money saved, right? So you save money, now you gotta make it work. You guys work hard, your money has to work harder, right, is my perspective. And so how do you do that? You get four and a half billion people in the capital markets working for you. Okay, so let's talk about it. <laughs> Suspense. Yeah, <laughs> it's like set up, right? <laughs> so when I talk about capital markets, right, what do you think are typical elements of the, of, of, of Places where you put money in. Anybody? Mutual funds. Mutual funds. Bonds. Bonds. Property. Property, real estate. Equities. Equities. Gold. Gold. Commodities, yeah. right? Gold, petroleum, silver. What else? AI. AI? Uh, Alternative investment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> right. So alternative investments, absolutely. Index. So mutual funds, index funds, right? Equity market. So FX commodities, right? So broad categories. So we've got equities, we've got bonds, we've got commodities, we've got real estate, right? Real estate is of two kinds: commercial and residential, right? That's a distinction there. Uh, cash. cash. What about cash? Nobody said cash. I, I know many of us have just big CDs. We, that's how we bought up. 
दस टका मिलेगा इंटरेस्ट रेट पैसा उधर लगा रहे सेव करने का कुछ नहीं होने वाला उसको राइट सो सीडीज have given the best return in your viewpoint or in your experience or which of these five real estate equity real estate equity real estate equities no equity ai <laughs> <laughs> it does yeah it does alternative investment i'm with you so we've got real estate we've got equities no we said cash again <laughs> hey listen your capital stays safe okay <laughs> sorry So I mean, given the market the way it's been moving, I think one percent, right? That's not bad. One point seven five now. <laughs> so so let's take a look at history, right? Because we all have our influence, right? हम लोगों को best पता है जो हमने किया है, right? But एक चीज़ शायद नहीं मालूम है कि what's behind the back of our head? I mean, yeah, for me it's like less hair, but still. Uh, but we don't know what's always behind the back of our head. Still we look, or somebody else looks for us, right? So let's. What's the best way to look at that? Is to look at data. So let's look at data based on these five classifications broadly, right? I'm sure you'll have one-off experiences that you've done better, but I'm happy to take those on and, and and talk about those more. So to reveal the suspense, right? There's residential real estate, there's non-home, so which is basically commercial, quasi-commercial, anything which is not real estate. Oh, sorry, no, which is not residential real estate. You have liquid assets, which essentially is cash and cash-like CDs, etc., right? <coughs> Then you have financial assets, which is equities and bonds, and then you have pension accounts. Uh, but basically, those are your four hundred one k's, okay? Four hundred one k's, IRAs, and those, so those are the your retirement accounts or pension accounts. Look at this, and, and I'm not cherry picking, right? You can go and look at this book. This is the reference of the book. I've just picked up the data from there. I'm not trying to massage it. I'm not trying to send a message here, but I'm just wanting you to look at the data because all of us have our own experiences, but this is data. How to read this is it's I've divided it into five year charts, or the author did. I just took it from there. 1983 to 1989, 89 to 2001, 2001 to 2007, 7 to 30, 7 to 10, 10 to 13, and then there's a combination here of 83 to 2013, right? So 83 to 2013, about 20 years of historic returns, right? 30 years. Thank you. I was wondering who was going to be awake about this. <laughs> Fun person. So yes, so what do you see here? There's a very clear trend of this green line, except for one instance, winning all the time, right? Do you see that here? Anybody disagree with that? What's the green line, or what's the dark green line? Financial. You know why? Four and a half billion people showing up for you every time beats anything else. A home, gold, FX. That's what the data shows. Because that's the power of four and a half billion people in the workforce in the world working for you, creating something for you new, which then derives a higher value. I'm just saying. Except for this time when there was a crisis, everybody remembers the crisis, right? Even then, real estate went down more than actual financial assets did, and then it rebounded much faster than anything else. I mean, this is good old cash. If you are putting cash in a CD or a savings accounts, other than for your liquidity requirements, you should really look at it very hard, right? This is what the story is of the American asset rate. So we have the financial asset and we have pension accounts. Ultimately, pension accounts are investing in the market. Yes. So how are they different? They're not, but they're classified differently. Okay. Uh, and there's a return difference here, which is yeah, which is which substantial. Is right. But there's a reason for that. Okay. In four hundred one k's, the choices that people have made. Okay. More long. No. Actually, less not efficient. long. Okay. 
right? They hold on, they don't make the contribution, or they make the contribution, they don't make the right investments, they make the right invest, investment with different returns of products, et cetera, and so that hampers them. And the choices are limited, that's the most important piece. Okay. The choices are limited versus, hey, you have a wider variety of choice. Okay. So if you want alternative investment, if that's your risk profile, you may not get it here, but you will get it here. Okay. So that's the reason why it's distinct. So there's a very clear winner here, right? Which, which is this, this guy here, right here. Make sense? And most of us don't do that. Most of us don't do that. And some of them, there's a good reason why they don't do that because they need, li they need liquidity, they need funds, et cetera. The others don't do it because that's not how we were educated on what we should put our money in. Sattabhaji. Which was true many, many years back in the context it was mentioned in, in the Indian markets, which were not deep at that time and they were perhaps manipulated, etc. Uh, I will send you notes. You will get the pitch pages so you don't have to worry about taking notes. Uh, but in the context of now, in the here and now, it's a very deep liquid market, which going back from 1929 to today, yes, there has been manipulation, etc. But in the current state, the way the depth of the market is, it's one of the most appropriate places for many of us, depending on our risk profile and our ability to take risk, that's where we should be in. Because that's the long-term engine for our investments. And this is my opinion. It's the long-term engine that gives and gives and gives and still gives. Because it's very basic. Yes, it goes up, and sure, it will go down at some point, and it's a very bad roller coaster ride sometimes. But in the long term, the United States of America, and even in India for now, for that matter, this is the right engine of growth for you guys to be thinking about in your stages of where you are, okay? So I just wanna make sure I voice that out aloud. Because we are very good at doing this. We are excellent at doing this. The Chinese and us, we are excellent at doing this. Nobody else in the world does it better than this part here that we can do. Uh, <laughs> Japanese are a whole different ball game. They, but yeah, okay, so let's say a few of the folks across the world are very good at doing this. However, the people who do a little bit of this and do a lot of this are folks who can make a bigger pile despite having a smaller start. That's the crucial difference. We keep focusing here. Right? We try to get the best deal. We go and save the dollar that we can the best way we can, right? We'll eat the bread in the pretzel style because that will get us an extra dollar. I have a simple message. You can still eat your bread the brioche style, right? Or this is a very simple style. But if you can work this with this, you can have a lifestyle which is just humongously different. You don't have to worry about the pretzel style. We worry about the pretzel style all the time. So, so that's what I want to talk about, right? So let me take an example to drive it home. I'm going to wait two minutes. I'm going to stop talking. I want to let you guys do some reading. I'll just explain the page to you, and then you can, you can just do that. I just showed you, and this is just is very broad, okay? So this is not specific to any instance. I've gone back in 1926 to 2017 in all three cases, okay? So I'm covering the known, relatively known history of the capital market. I'm not showing any massaging, etc. 1926 to 2017. This is a 100% bond pro portfolio, right? Where you bought bonds. This is a 50-50 of stock and bonds. This is 100% bonds, okay? So the risk is increasing from left to right. Bonds being relatively safe and stocks being the, the, the least safe. Look at this. If you set up, up just for $100 back in 1926, this is what you end up with in the first case. This is what you end up with in the third case. Tell me at this stage you're still worried about getting the bread to be a pretzel. That's the life-changing number. It's bolte na mita bachche ne saath jangon ke liye kama diya uske saath kuch to kaam nahi karna padega. What I saw kitab hai. Look at this. I'm not talking about 10x, right? I'm talking more than, just, just the difference right there in front of you. 
However, what do you have to keep in mind? Look at the years of the loss, right? This is 14 of 92. This is 25 of 92. So yes, there were more years of losses. But despite that, despite that, and hence you had you know you had more volatility, et cetera, et cetera. Despite that, look at the number you end up with. So you had more losses and more volatility, yet you ended up with this number versus lesser losses than this number. If you are a logical person, I'm not sure where you would be, on the left side or the right side or the middle, but you can understand the wide lifestyle change that you would have if you follow up savings with smart investing, right? And, and so that's, anybody have a question on this? That's the simple maths of it. And you know, you can follow through, I've given the details of how I got to it, right? This is the source of it, here's the calculator I use, so you guys can do your own computation, you can shorten the time frame, you can lengthen the time frame, anything you want. There's a calculator there. This thing comes out a winner. Just look at this. Now your risk profile has to be there and the right context has to be there, right? But this thing is just mind changing. It's a you know it's a it's a life changing addition. So if you want to change your life, perhaps for the better, you really have to look at this. I'll take another minute. This is in 20 years. What do you think that the equity markets gave in the last 20 years? Or the bond index game. Just guess a number. Ten percent. Nine percent. Ten percent. Twelve percent. What did the bond market give? So I'll give the answer, right? So nine percent. Definitely get a handy, right? How much do you think that the average investor made when the market gave this much? Five. Five. Six. Five. Six. Five point differences, four point differences between people doing it themselves versus what the market is doing for them. Because it's a very simple reason, right? Money is an emotional topic, but it's a hard earned money, right? And so we get blinded by it, right? Or we get pushed off to doing difficult things about our money because it's ours. We earned it. So whatever you're doing is obviously you think you're doing it right and you think you're doing it for the best of your money. But it's an emotional thing, right? So, so you need to make sure you keep a balanced view on things and then not get caught up on this is my money and so I want to do it all the time, right? right? And so you have to re-examine whatever you're doing all the time. And so that's where it's helpful to kind of, like you pointed out, right? get some outsider perspective, even if you've been doing it for yourself for the longest time. Make sense? Questions, comments, thoughts? <laughs> Put the next slide on then. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm serious. That's for too many questions. <laughs> That's for too many questions. Yeah, this is this is about me. And so if you guys, you. I'm, you know, I'm happy. To, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to do follow up questions or I'll give out my business card. Give me a phone call. Don't worry about costs, etc. We'll just have a conversation. And so feel free to do that. The reason I do it is because I'm myself a coordinator of in the USA out of Boston. So I love doing that. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.